given you every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. It is finished, Jesus said on the cross. There's nothing left to do, and it's all there for you. But now I got to use the key that opens the heavens and brings heavenly things into the earth so that I can change my life. There are keys to peace. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And the fact is, if you open heaven up in your life, it's going to be up to you. It's not going to be up to God. Because the blessing is not on the place. The blessing's on me. So if I show up wherever I be, it'll be blessed in the country. Blessed in the... It don't matter where you be. You're going to be blessed because you walk under the state of blessing. Somebody say three times, I am blessed. Come on. I am blessed. Shout it. I am blessed. Deuteronomy 28 is the famous blessings and curses chapter. I had a mentor, he's up in years now, but the mentor was Dr. Mike Murdoch, who I still hold to this day, no matter what your feelings, he's one of the most brilliant men I've ever been around in my life. My conversations with him were life-changing. And he looked at me and said, Ron, he said, you can have a $500,000 Rolls Royce. He said, but if one tire's flat, you can't drive it. And what I've noticed about Christians is we're getting a lot right. But it can be that one or two things you're getting wrong that keeps the whole car from running. Just, just a flat tire, something two, three hundred dollars may be able to change it. But the fact is, the car will not run no matter what the car's potential. You can have a Ferrari, but if the tire's flat, the Ferrari will not run. So you remain potential under restraint. Curses are restrainers. Curses is not, God, I curse you. It's not, it's, it, that's, you're in Hollywood. God has built into the atmosphere. We call them the laws of the kingdom. He's built laws. These laws, I preach to you every Sunday. I'm not preaching to you a moral code that you have to keep. In other words, to stay in, good, in God's good graces. When I'm preaching to you the laws, commands, precepts of God, principles of God, I am handing you keys. I've talked about this for years, keys. And those keys can unlock the heavens, and if you ignore them, they close up the heavens. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And the fact is, if you open heaven up in your life, it's going to be up to you. It's not going to be up to God. Because the keys of the kingdom, God has not got them in his hands. He's put them in your hands. I give you the keys of the kingdom. I give you. So I can release every heavenly thing that I want to if I use the key. If I ignore the key, heaven remains as brass. It is shut up. Okay? I tell you every time we get to the tithe and offering how to open up heavenly provision. But there are people that for whatever, you may be a cynic. You may, you may be negative toward this. You may have gotten burned somewhere before. And when you do not heed that word, do you know what to do? That, that element of the heavens are like brass to you. You cannot open them without the key. It is only the key that opens them. You can pray, but pray is, praying is not the key for provision. You can fast, but fasting is not the key to provision. The way to key to provision is bring the tithe and bring the offering and see if I will not pour out the blessing that there's not room enough to receive. Come on, somebody. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he not destroy the fruit of your vine. Come on. In any way, you have got to understand to everything heaven promises, there is a key in the earth that unlocks it. He's given you every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. It is finished, Jesus said on the cross. There's nothing left to do, and it's all there for you. But now I got to use the key that opens the heavens and brings heavenly things into the earth so that I can change my life. There are keys to peace. There are keys to joy. Ah, the kingdom is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Have you noticed that all of our millennial preachers preach on depression and anxiety every Sunday? 
And I'm like, quit empathizing with everybody and feeling sorry for them because they're so full of anxiety. Why? You've not told them about the Holy Spirit and the kingdom is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. Turn loose the Holy Spirit and give them the Holy Spirit and the joy and peace that comes with him will drive out the fear, drive out the oppression, and drive out the anxiety. My God, I'm preaching today. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tap your neighbor and say, he's preaching. Come on, he's preaching. Ah, it says it right there. There's the key. When I have the Holy Spirit, there is a peace that passes understanding. When I have the Holy Spirit, I have joy. See, most people want to be happy. Happy is from the root word happening. So you're happy, and that swings with what is happening in your life. So happiness can come and go based on what's happening. But joy is a constant because it's not external. It is internal, and everything can be falling apart around me, but I still got my joy. Hallelujah. Do you understand? Why? Because I got the Holy Ghost, and it is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Shout amen. Okay. Ah. Hmm. So when God put into the earth laws, when that law is ignored, the curse is built in to the law. When the law is acknowledged, the blessing is built into the acknowledgement. It's not God out there handing out curses and blessings. It's not verbs. It's not action. Blessed shall ye be. Cursed shall ye be. It's a state of being. (laughs) It's not an action that God does. It is a state of being that you're living out because you have not acknowledged the law. (laughs) Okay? There are laws at work in this room right now that I can't see. There are sound waves moving through this room I can't see. If they were not in here, you would not hear my voice. But those sound waves are invisible and carrying the sound of my voice to your ear. I can't see them, but they're at work right now. Those laws are at work right now. If I jump off that stage, 210 pounds is gonna hit that concrete because there is an invisible law called the law of gravity. Can I tell you something about gravity? Gravity does not care if I'm a Christian or not. Gravity doesn't care if I love the Lord. Gravity, I can work with it or I can work against it. But you know what? It's not going away just because I don't acknowledge it. Is this all right? I'm going to keep digging. What are you going to say? What's he going to say next? He don't even know. (laughs) Okay. 200 ton jets are flying all over the skies right now because there's an invisible law where it's called the law of lift. And when certain dynamics come into play, there's a law that'll take tons, raise it in the air and let it fly 550 miles an hour. It's not because airplanes are great, it's because they are acknowledging a law. And they're flying in conjunction with that law. And that law lets them defy gravity because it's a higher law. (laughs) Can I keep going? So the Bible says, if I obey everything he's commanded me this day, if I'm faithful and diligent to observe it, God is an if-then God. If you, then I'll. If you, then I'll. If you, then I'll. Okay? If you hearken and do in accordance with these laws and commands that I've given you this day. And then he talks about the state of being you will enjoy. Blessing. 
You will be blessed here. You will be blessed there. It doesn't matter where you be, you will be blessed. Okay? I've heard people say, oh, pastor, pray for me to get that job. That job would be such a blessing. I'm like, you got it backwards. The blessing isn't on them. The blessing's on you. The greatest thing they could do is hire you because when you pull up in the parking lot, that place is blessed. Just be you got you to rearrange your thinking. The blessing's on you. People said, Pastor, do you think that you would have success if you'd go to this city in the country? And I look at them not arrogantly or piously, but I say, I absolutely do. They say, why you say that? Because the blessing is not on the place. The blessing's on me. So if I show up wherever I be, it'll be blessed in the country. Blessed in the, it don't matter where you be, you're going to be blessed because you walk under the state of blessing. I want somebody in here to walk under a state of blessing that it doesn't matter who you're with, who you're around, what you're going through, where you work, what the name of your business is, but there is a state of being blessing that rests solely on you and everybody recognizes it when you come in the room. They don't know what it is, they don't know how to explain it, but you carry it with you you when you enter. Somebody say three times, I am blessed. Come on. I am blessed. Shout it. I am blessed. And touch your neighbor and say, and you are too. Come on. And you are too. series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we'll include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. Don't go anywhere. We're going to get back to that word in just a moment. But I want to just break right here for just a second and I want to ask you, uh, would you consider something? I am always so grateful to all of our wonderful covenant partners and maybe people who aren't covenant partners, but you give occasionally, some of you frequently, some of you uh, whenever there's that ability. But I want you to notice we didn't sell any ads and we didn't have any sponsors and we didn't have any commercials because we believe the gospel of Jesus, that the people of God are so passionate about his message going forth, the message of salvation and the message of his kingdom, the way we can live an abundant life is the most important thing in the earth. And we believe that with such a deep passion that we give and we give sacrificially. Would you consider, those of you who have been given your continued faithful giving, those of you who maybe occasionally, would you become a consistent giver? Maybe those of you who've been blessed but never given before, maybe for the first time, becoming a monthly covenant partner or just a one-time gift. But we want to do everything we can to stay on the air and represent Jesus Christ in a very powerful and a very excellent way. We have a great team of people right here who are just as passionate about it as I am. And with you, the viewers, helping us do what we do, there's no end to how many people we can reach. We're in the greatest days ever of seeing more people saved than we ever have before. Would you help me go further? Give now. Just like the blessing is built into the obedience, it comes naturally. It's a part of the law. It's sowing and reaping. It's the way God designed it. When it's ignored, when it's not observed, when you're casual about it, then all these curses 
shall come upon you. The curse is built into the disobedience. Yes, it is. And there's some people under the sound of my voice, you're confused about what's going on in your life. And that's the reason I have shifted my whole message. Could it be that you're living under the curse? Because curses are aggressive. And all these curses shall pursue you, shall overtake you. Oh. In other words, they don't stay at the same level. They keep chasing and they keep chasing and they keep chasing until they've got you and until they've wound up you and your wife and until they've tangled up you and your whole family and until everybody's in a web of curses and then when it happens three or four generations, we call it a generational. Now the restraint that began because of your disobedience has become a generational constraint and nobody in the bloodline can wiggle out from under And a lot of us, we don't think, we think that because we don't do big sins, <laughs> that these things don't really, you know, that's, that's for curses, that's for bad people. And I'm not a bad person, you know. <laughs> what is a generational curse? It is an act of willful rebellion and disobedience toward God that started in one generation and that with every generation through the bud line, it grew and multiplied. And what was in the closet with your granddaddy is now in the street with your child. <laughs> because it multiplies as it passes. It, it does not stay the same. Remember, what you refuse to confront grows. It does not stay the same. So generational curses are something that now I'm watching my kids swing at the air and they don't even know what they're fighting. And then you see your grandkids, they're, and they, don't even know, they don't even know what they're fighting. Because they keep pursuing. They pursue the next generation and the next, until they have overtaken the family. And that family now is like the woman with the issue of blood. How sad it is for that woman to be known by her issue. All we know about, we don't know her name. We don't know anything good she's done. She's the woman with the issue. And now your whole family is known because of its issue. <clears throat> Curses are very simple. You look in your life and you notice, and you notice restraints. When you have potential that for whatever reason is never released. When you know that, I got, I'm telling you what, y'all are dialed in right now. If God's saying something, I can tell because the, the attention in here is at a high level. Listen to me very carefully. Whenever you see an area where you know divinely and internally there is something supposed to be happening, but it never does. How many of you have ever been there? I need to see some hands. How many of you right now know that there, you can feel, come on, I need you to be honest with me because I'm getting ready to tell a story. How many of you can feel that there are areas where something is holding it back, something is restraining it, you can feel it in your life, in your family's life? How many of you right now? Okay, then I'm in the right place. <clears throat> ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I, um, I want you to play something on the keys, stack them and play them. And not hymnish, not, not, not old church. Just give, just give me some, yeah, just real light, real light, real background. Thank you. <clears throat> I had a conversation with Hope one time. When I told her I was having to fight for my heart. And she's like, what are you talking about, Ron? I said, I'm having to fight to keep from becoming a cynic 
because I just went through a long season where nobody kept their word. <laughs> I mean, it, I'm telling you, it damaged me. It, I just got to where I didn't believe in nobody. That's not a good way to live. I don't care what kind of promises were made, whether in word or in contract, it didn't matter. I just went through this long season where nobody kept their word. And I would find myself in a conversation with somebody where they would make commitments and in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh yeah. I know I'm not as spiritual as y'all, so won't y'all pray for me, all right, when you go home today? Because I know none of y'all have ever felt like that, have you? Okay. <laughs> but I could feel it, and I'm gonna tell you, it's hard to be a man of faith and be cynical at the same time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> but it was, it was really bothering me. And, and, and I had a mentor in my life call me on it because she heard it started getting on my mouth. And she said, I'm hearing you talk like I'm not used to hearing you talk. <laughs> because when I would get alone or get with my wife or get with somebody I trusted, I would vent this constant breaking of covenant that was beginning to cause me to lose faith. And see, as a man of God, I have to stand up here and believe the best in people. I have to believe people can change. I have to, I, I, if I don't do that, then this whole thing's a sham. Let's shut it down and go home because I believe in change. I believe God can change anybody. Change me. Did he change you? He changed, you know that. So I believe in change. But I felt this thing, and I had to war for that, to not let that stuff pollute me because you guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of life. If you start having a bitter heart, you'll have a bitter life. I don't want a bitter life. <clears throat> and I stopped and I said, God, this is a pattern. And the Holy Spirit told me, he said, no, it's a curse. And I said, God, this curse has lasted about 10 years. I said, show me. And the Holy Spirit took me back to the, one of the smallest little things where I told somebody I was going to do something and I didn't lie, but I didn't keep my word. And that person is still disappointed with me up until this day. And so I acknowledged that sin before God I renounced its power. Let me tell you what I did. I brought it and I applied the blood of Jesus to it because only the blood of Jesus can break anything in the bloodline. <laughs> and then I went and attempted after many years to make that right. And it was my promise to stay in touch with somebody and give their life oversight, but just in busyness. They had tried to get with me several times and I kept putting it off and kept putting it off and kept, till they become delusion toward me and toward leadership. I turned around and I fixed that thing. And when I fixed that thing, I cannot tell you the blessing that began to flood in my life relationally just in the last couple of weeks. I mean, almost like a miraculous turnaround broke through because I acknowledged a curse, brought it under the blood, yes. made that thing right, and hearkened unto the voice of God to carefully observe all that he commanded me to do that day. <clears throat> Financially, I was feeling tremendous restraints. I knew the potential of the giving potential of the churches was much greater grinding like I've never grind before, writing letters to covenant partners like I've never written before, just grinding and grinding and grinding. I mean, I can just feel it. Just almost like it was behind a dam and the walls were behind it. But it was, and I said, God, what is it? Had two pieces of property for sale in one of the hottest economies in the world, and I couldn't move them. I should be the first one moving them because I got the favor of God. But they didn't move. All of them moving around me. Mine sitting there. God, what is going on? Listen to this. I said, God, is it another curse? And he took me back to a day about 10 years ago. Listen to this, guys. The Holy Spirit took me there. I didn't even realize it. 
where I was having problem logging on to a website that had a subscription and I couldn't get my passwords and all to work. So a friend said, here for today, use mine. And I went back and hit that website and found out that it was still under his subscription. And God said, you've robbed that company of $1,000. So I'm sending them a check for $1,000 and tell them that I apologize because I didn't acknowledge the fact that me just using somebody, um, just, just didn't mean nothing by it. Just, I ain't got time for this. My thing, my password ain't working. What, just use this right, and got in. And then years and years later, if I ever went to it, I was under that same, and the Lord said, you're robbing them. I can't overlook it. So what's happening? You're not acknowledging me, and it's pursuing you, and it's pursuing you, and it's overtaking you. Okay, I made that right that morning and sold one of those properties that night. Now you're giving a golf cart clap, but if that was you, you'd be running around the church naked and we'd be trying to get you out of jail. I want to take a moment before you get off the air because I think it would be tragic uh, for you to have stayed with me these last few minutes and given me uh, this much of your time and me not have a chance to lead you to Jesus. Whether you're deficient, whether you're depleted, whether life is pretty good or whether life is tragic, everybody needs a savior. Everybody has that void deep down the inside that success, significance, money, nothing else will satisfy. Only Jesus can satisfy the longings of the heart. And I wanna offer you Jesus today. It's this simple, would you pray with me? It goes like this. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died and rose on the third day so I could be saved. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Make my heart your home. I receive your gift of salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. And just like that, You've been saved. You've been born again. Now you got to let us know. So write in, call, do whatever you have to. We want to know what God has done in your life. He sent his word and healed us. Now he wants it returned unto him. So the prayer of faith goes back and says, Lord, I thank you that by your stripes I am healed and healing is the children's bread. The prayer of faith does not ask God. It already knows what God wants to do. This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we'll include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen.